Masechet Baba Metzia Daf Lamed Vav. The Mishnah yesterday we talked about the case of Hasocher Paramechavero Vishila Laacher Umeta Kedar Kai Shaba Socher Shemeta Kedar Kavashal Yashem La Socher. Someone rents a cow from the owner of the cow, and then that renter in turn uh, um, lends it out for free to a Shoel. And it dies a natural death. In which case the socher is not liable. He does have to. Make, he does have to make a vow that it died a natural death, and so he does not have to pay the owner. Whereas the shoel is liable in such a case, and the shoel pays the socher, such that the socher actually makes money on the deal. Uh, now we're going to learn uh, some more interesting details about this type of case. Amar biyirmiya. Pamim sheshenehem bechatat, pamim sheshenehem be'asham, pamim shasocher bechatat v'asho'el be'asham, pamim shasocher be'asham v'asho'el bechatat. Hakesad kefirat mamon asham bitui sefataim hatat. Let's talk about the principle first, and I'll go back. Um, in general, if someone makes a false vow that will save them from paying money, then uh, they have to bring, and they're found out to be uh, lying, then they have to bring an asham offering, in addition to paying back the amount, plus a fifth, he has to bring an asham. However, bitui sefataim just means an utterance of the lips, that is a false vow, that is not, does not have a monetary impact, in that case, he only brings a korban hatat. That's the main difference. So, um, Rabbi Irmiya is saying, in a case like that of our Mishnah, where you have a socher who lends it out to a sho'el, sometimes both of them will be liable to a hatat, assuming that they're both going to take a vow, if that's a false vow. Sometimes both false vow will be bitui sefataim, and therefore be a hatat. In another case, both of them will make a false vow that will have monetary impact, that will save them from paying something or have them gain something that is illegitimate, and therefore they both have to bring an asham. And there are other cases where the socher will bring a chatat and shoel nasham, and the other way around where socher brings an asham and the shoel a chatat, and we'll explain each case. Pamim shishenem bechatat kigon shemeta kedarka ve'ameru ne'ensa. Both of them have to bring chatat in the case where the socher borrows a cow, and then he lends it to a sho'el, and it dies a natural death. But, that's the truth, but they lie, and they say that it was uh, stolen as honest, beyond one's control, like armed robbers came and stole it. Now, socher de ben kach ben kach miftar patur bechatat. Shod ben kach ben kach yuve michayev bechatat. The socher is not liable to pay either way, whether it died of natural death, or it was honest, the socher is patur in both of those cases. Now, therefore, he swore falsely. It's not clear why he swore falsely. He doesn't gain anything by swearing falsely, but whatever for whatever reason he did. So the false swear has no monetary impact because even with the truth, he would not have to pay. So the false swear does not make him not have to pay. Therefore, he has to bring a chatat. And the sho'el is liable for both. A sho'el is only... Uh, exempt from payment if it dies because of its work. But here, if it dies, uh, now whether it dies a natural death or um, it it, uh, it was uh, honest um, and was stolen and uh, impossible, uh, be, be a circumstance beyond one's control. So the sho'el is liable in both cases. So the fact that the sho'el lied does not make him more or less liable, does not make him any less liable, he's equally liable. And therefore, since both of their vows are false, but have no monetary effect, therefore, they both bring a chatat. What's a case where both of them have to bring in Asham? Where it was stolen. Only a Shomer Chinam is not liable when it's stolen. Um, so both of them would be liable. Um, uh, but they say it died because of while it was working, because of its because of work. In which case both of them are uh, uh, in, 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 in which case both of them are not liable. So for both of them, their vow is denying something that they actually have to pay. Both of them have to pay because a socher and shoel both have to pay a case of geneva. And when they lie, that lie 
is causing them to deny payment of something that they really do have to pay. And therefore, both of them um, have to bring an asham offering, right? Because they both are chayav, and by, by swearing falsely, they're trying to get out of it, they're trying to exempt themselves illegitimately. Where do you have a case where socher is to bring chatat and nashuel nasham if it dies a natural death? But they lie and say that it died because of work. Socher de ben kach ben kach miftar patur chayav be bechatat. The socher is patur either way, um, and the fact that he's lying does is not a denial of money because he is not he's exempt no matter what. In fact, it actually died a natural death, but still is exempt, and therefore his lie is a bitui sefataim and brings a chatat. Shod mechia b'meta kedarka v'kapata nafshe b'meta mechamat melacha be'asham. However, the shoel who is liable if it dies a natural death, which is the truth, so he really is liable, and now he lies and says it died because of his labor, um, and uh, by lying, by making that lie, he is denying payment that he really does have to pay. So therefore, he has to bring an asham. And the last case, socher v'asham v'shob bechatat kegon shenigneba v'amru meta kedarka. When does the socher have to bring an asham and shoel bring a chatat? When it was stolen, and they said it died a natural death. Socher hud mechay b'gineva v'aveda v'kapata nafshe v'meta kedarka be'asham. The socher who actually is liable because he's liable for a loss and, and uh, if it's lost and stolen, so he really does have to pay. When he lies and says it died a natural death, he's trying to deny payment that he really has to give. So his false vow includes a denial of payment, and therefore he brings an asham. Whereas Shoel de ben kachu ben kachu ve mechayev bechatat, Shoel has to pay no matter what, whether it was stolen or whether it died a natural death, and therefore his lie is only bitu sefatayim, and the only bring has to bring a chatat. Okay, um, as long as you get the first principle, the rest is pretty easy to figure out. So the Gemara asks, "My kamash malan, what is it Bimiya teaching us?" I mean, all this is pretty straightforward logic, and the answer is Lapukem did be ame damar kol shiva sheidim mashbin ota en chayven alem bishum shabat bitui shneimad o nefesh ki tishaba lebate bisfataim ki tishaba meatzma kamash malan dela kid be ame. This whole thing is here to uh, to say that we disagree, or that Rabbi Yemiyah disagrees with Rabbi Ameh. Rabbi Ameh said that any vow that is administered by a court, um, uh, one is not liable to bring korban hatat if it's a false vow that has no denial of money. Why does Rabbi Ameh say that? Why does he say that? His sources from the Pasuk says, if a person should make a vow, to utter with lips a false vow, the key here means im, if. If he decides to vow, that means if he takes a vow on his own, outside of court, he decides to make a vow, and he says something that's just false, then he has to bring a korban chatat. But if, it's minister, if, if a, a vow is administered by the court, then it's not an optional one. The court made him vow. And therefore, if it's simply an untruth, that is not a denial of money, he does not bring any, any korban at all. And therefore, the above examples of all, the, all these chatat examples are all examples where the court administered the oath, and nevertheless, Rabbi Yirmiyah says, you have to bring a chatat. And so that's why he taught this, to say to show that he disagrees with Rabbi Ame. Itmar, Shomer Shema Sal Shomer, Rav Amar Patur, Rabbi Yochanan Amar Chayav. This is going to be related to the previous discussion, but this is a, this is a new machloket. If one Shomer um, uh, gives something to another Shomer, which is similar to the case above of a Socher that gives it to a Sho'el. And so in general, if one Shomer gives it to another, Rav says he is not liable. Rabbi Yochanan says he is liable. Now we're going to see what kind of cases do they talk about? What kind of Shomerim would this law apply to? Abaye says, according to Rav, who says Patur, not only is the first Shomer Patur when the first Shomer is a Shomer Chinam, and he gives it to a Shomer Sachar, and he pays the wages of the Shomer Sachar, um, that in that case, for sure, the Shomer Chinam would be not liable because he's giving it a greater safeguard. The original owner of this cow gave it to a Shomer Chinam. 
who has a low-level responsibility. That Shomer Chinam paid of his own pocket a Shomer Sachar who has a higher level of responsibility. So that's even better. It's like if you give me something to, to watch, right, for free, okay, I'll watch it for you. I go and I put it in a safe deposit box, right? I'm doing something that's even better. So for sure, I would not be liable. And anything that a Shomer Chinam would not be liable, that Shomer Sachar also would not be liable. And the Shomer Chinam would not be liable to pay for the fact that he gave it to a Shomer Sachar. And um, and so the original owner would not get paid in any case where Shomer Chinam would not pay. Um, so not, that's for sure. That's obvious. But even if the original owner gave it to a Shomer Sachar, and that Shomer Sachar then handed it to a Shomer Chinam, that would be like the safe deposit, the bank saying, telling me, here, take this home and just watch it in your home because uh, we don't have room for it here. In that case, the, the level of safeguarding is diminished. A Shomer Sachar has more responsibility and is giving it to a Shomer Chinam who has less responsibility. Nevertheless, according to Rav, Still, patur. If something happens to it, um, that in that the shomer sachad would be patur. If it's in that category, then the shomer sachad is still patur, even though he gave it to a shomer chinam. Why? Because he gave it to a competent person, and so this is this is not called negligent. If the shomer sachad gave it to a child, then that's negligent. Uh, he can't they can't um, hold on to it properly. But the shomer sachad felt that this is a bendat, a competent person. So it's still within the realm of uh, of, res- of being responsible on it and not being neg- negligent, and so he doesn't have to pay. Now, according to the Biochanan, who says Hayav, not only would he say Hayav if the original owner gave it to a Shomer Sachar, and that Shomer Sachar gave it to a Shomer Chinam, who is a lower level, oh, you're liable, I gave it to you as a Shomer Sachar. So you have to have a high level of, of responsibility. You're going to be very careful, because you're responsible kind of thing. You gave it to a Shomer Chinam, who is not responsible for loss, if, a, if, if it gets lost and stolen, and so the Shomer Sachar then would be liable for any loss that can be attributed to the fact that he gave it to a Shomer Chinam. So that's for sure because it went to a lower level. Even if the original only gave it to a Shomer Chinam, and the Shomer Chinam gave it to a higher level, to a Shomer Sachar, where it's a higher level of responsibility and protection. Nevertheless, he would be liable um, uh, if, in fact, it uh, something happens to it that is attributable to the fact that it went to another party, um, like the home of the Shomer Sachar was in a worse area or something. Um, why? Because the owner could say, I did not want my deposit to be in someone else's hands. You, the Shomer Chinam, I trusted you. I trusted you so much that I trust you not even without even without payment, even with your lower level of safeguard. I trust you. And if you make a vow that, you know, this happened without negligence, I trust your vow. That's why I gave it to you. I made the deal with you. And that Shomer Sachar, I didn't want it to be with someone else. Even if he's getting paid and higher, has a higher level of responsibility and safeguard, I don't know that guy. I don't trust his vow and um, I, I don't trust uh, his, his, his uh, guardianship. And therefore, that Shomer Chinam will be liable for having given it over to a Shomer Sachar. Amar Rav Chista, Had Rav la beferush itmar ela mikelala. Now Rav Chista says, when we quoted Rav saying, Shomer, Shemasar le Shomer, Patur, Rav did not actually say that explicitly. Rather, we inferred it from a story. Now, whenever you infer a law from a story, you always have to be careful. Is that really what the story was about? So there were some gardeners, and every day they would deposit their spades with a certain old woman. Right? She, she had a barn, and they put it there. It was near where they worked, and then they went home. They didn't have to carry their spades all the way home. Every day they would deposit. She was a shomeret. One day, for whatever reason, they were in it in a different way. They didn't give it to this old woman. Rather, one of the gardeners was keeping the spades of, of everybody in his house. But then he heard there was a, a sound from a wedding. He heard some music. 
So I'm dancing. He says, I want to go and join. He doesn't want to leave the spades home alone. So he took the spades and he gave it to that same old woman that they usually go to. And he went to the wedding. By the time he came and went, came back, when he came back, the spades were stolen from the old woman's house. So the case came before Rav to adjudicate, and he said, the gardener that put it in the old woman's house is exempt. He is a shomer, shemasar le shomer, right? Because all the gardeners gave it to him, and he then gave it to a woman. So those who heard, who saw the story, witnessed it, and they were there, and they heard Rav say that, they assumed that Rav felt that the halacha is in general. One shomer that hands something over to another shomer, the first shomer is not liable, right? He's permitted. He gave it to someone competent and uh, mentally competent, and therefore that's fine. And so they generalized from this ruling of Rav to his general opinion. However, you cannot generalize from this case because this case is different since every day all of the gardeners themselves would deposit their spades with this old woman. So that shows that they trusted this old woman. They cannot say, like we said down here, I didn't want my deposit to be with someone else. They're perfectly fine with giving it to that old woman every day. And therefore, the the first Shomer gardener was certainly within his rights and with the assumption of acceptability of all the other gardeners of giving it to that old woman. Only here, Rav said Patur, but... In a general case, where they don't usually say that uh, this uh, the second Shomer is good for us, then he cannot do that. And Shomer, Shemasal Shomer, Hayav. So this is a very, very interesting phrase. La Befirushit Mar Elamikelala. And this comes up many times, and in each one they analyze, well, what was the general rule? or story from which we inferred it, and in some cases it was a good inference, in some cases not a good inference, which makes you wonder, in general, when we have a, an apodictic statement of an Amora like this, patur, I, and here, and then now we learn that Rav didn't actually say this, it was only inferred, in general, how often does this happen that, in fact, a rabbi said a story, said a law, a law in a certain case, or he said one thing, and then we derived it from, from a similar statement, or we derived it from a story, how often is that the case? And they didn't actually say something directly, um, and it could make a big difference, as it does in this case. So, uh, Rabbi Ame was uh, sitting and uh, repeating this uh, uh, this machloket that we just uh, said before, and in particular the the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan that Moshe Shomer Shemasam Shomer Hayav. And then Rabbi Abba Bamemal asked, challenged Rabbi Ameh from our Mishnah. Our Mishnah, if you remember, said that someone is a socher, a cow, and then he lends it to someone else, a sho'el, and then it dies a natural death. So the socher can make a vow that um, it died a natural death and he does not have to pay, and the sho'el then has to pay the socher. The socher makes money on the deal. However, if it's true what Rabbi Yochanan said, that a person does not want his um, item to be in the hands of someone else. So then, in this case also, the original owner can tell the socher, I gave it to you to rent to, to rent and use. I didn't want it to be in the hands of someone else. Therefore, you, socher, you are liable to pay me. This is a pretty strong question that had been against Rabbi Yochanan. And so Rabbi Ameh answers on behalf of Rabbi Yochanan and says... Here, we're talking about a case where um, the original owner gave it to the socher uh, uh, with, a, a grin, with an agreement, with permission, that he can then give it to a sho'el. So it was built into that original condition. If so, that he's the original owner, told the, told the socher, yes, you can give it to, a, to the sho'el, 
Well, then the sho'el should pay the original owner because the original owner basically is authorizing giving it to a sho'el. It's as if he is directly giving it to the sho'el, so sho'el now should be liable to pay. He says, no, we're talking about a case where the original owner said that that's at your discretion. You do it, you could rent it, you could, you could use it yourself. You can, um, you can lend it out. In other words, it's yours to use as you wish, and you're allowed to sublease it. And therefore, the sho'el is responsible directly to the socher. So the sho'el pays the socher, and the socher does not have to pay the sho'el, the original owner, because the original owner um, agreed that um, it's okay, I don't mind if my cow is in the hands of someone else. Mativ Rami Bar Hama Hamafkid Maot Esel Chavaro Seran Vishil Nachorav Mesan Libno Ubito Haketanim Venabif Nem Shalokera Oi Chayav Shelo Shamar Kederech Shomerim Rami Bar Hama is going to challenge Rabbi Yochanan's reasoning from a Mishnah later on on 42a that if someone uh, get deposited coins with someone else to watch for him and the Shomer put it in a cloth and slung it behind him which is not a great way to safeguard something. Putting it behind you makes it very easy for pickpockets to come and take some coins out of that cloth. Or the Shomer gave it to his minor children to watch. Not good. They're minors. They don't have mental competence to watch something carefully. Or he locked it. He locked up the coins, but in an inappropriate manner. In a door that's a flimsy door that's easy to open, not in a proper safe. In all these cases, since the Shomer did, it was negligent. He then the, the Shomer is liable should they get stolen because he didn't watch in the normal way of Shomrim. You don't have to put it in Fort Knox, but you have to put it do it in a normal way. Okay. Tama diktanim hagedolim patur amai nemale en resonishi he pigdoni biadacher. So we can infer here the reason why he has to pay is because he gave it to a minor, but if he gave it to an adult, then he's patur. Why? Why don't we apply the principle of Rabbi Yochanan that the original one could say, I gave it to you to watch, not for someone else to watch. But here we can infer that if the Shomer gave it to an adult and then it got stolen, then he would not be liable because he gave it to an adult who was a competent person. It's a good challenge against Rabbi Yochanan and his reasoning. Amarava, kol mafkid al dat ishto banav hu mafkid. So he said, Rava explains, the gadol here is not just any other person, but rather members of the Shomer's household. And the reason is because the original owner, when he gives it to a Shomer, he assumes that the father of the house isn't always going to be the one watching it. Rather, he's going to get help from his wife and from his adult children. He's going to tell his wife, listen, I'm going out, right? Here's the money of that guy. It's there in that closet. Just keep an eye out uh, for it or he'll tell his adult children. And since that's, um, that's built into the uh, agreement, um, so he can, the owner cannot say, I didn't want to be in the hands of someone else. Um, and this is not in the hands of someone else. This is the, in the hands of the Shomer's family who is included. And in the Hardea, they say that this conclusion is actually um, the, a correct reading of the Mishnah, because if you read the Mishnah carefully, see, it says, if he gives it to his minor son and daughter, then the Shomer is liable. That means if he gave it to his adult son or daughter, then he is patur because it's his own family. But if he gives it to someone else, a stranger, even if it's an adult, doesn't matter whether it's an adult or a child, he would be liable. Um, uh, and because if it were not so, if any adult would not be liable, then it should say, if he gives it to a child, then he is liable. So if he gives it to an adult, any adult, he would not be liable. It doesn't say that. It only says if he gives it to his minor child, he is liable. So we can infer from that that an adult child, is he is not liable because... The original owner says, I give it to you, and I assume that anybody in your household, adults will take care of it as well, but foreigners, uh, uh, people outside the family, not so. So we can actually prove from this Mishnah, in accordance with Rabbi Yochanan, um, that 
um, if he, the Shomer gives it to someone outside his household, that's Shomer Shema Sar the Shomer, and that is Chayav. Amar Rav El Chetah, Shomer Shema Sar the Shomer, Chayav. So Rava is the one who said this explanation. And so based on that, Rava says, Halacha is like Rabbi Yochanan, that a Shomer that, that uh, gives something to another Shomer and something happens to it is liable. And we're following the reasoning that we presented above, that not only in the case of a Shomer Sachar that gives Shomer Chinam, where he's going a lower lower grade safeguarding, but even if the original only gave it to Shomer Chinam, and Shomer Chinam hired a Shomer Sachar to watch it, where it's a higher level of safeguarding, nevertheless, if something happens to it, the first Shomer is liable. Why? Um, because the original owner can say, I believe you, the first Shomer, who, to make a vow that you were negligent. I didn't never said I would believe the other guy. Um, uh, this Ravaz seems to be introducing this um, uh, this reasoning over and above the reasoning that Abiy Ochanan said before, that I didn't want my item to be in the hands of someone else. Um, this could be an expansion, explanation of what he meant by that. Good. Itmar. Pasha ba v'yasat le'agam umeta kedarka. Abaye mishmet rabba amar chayav. Rava mishmet rabba amar patur. We now learn a machloke between two amoraim related to the above subject, where a shomer is negligent and allows the animal to go wander out in the marsh, where it's not safe there, it could be easily stolen or lost. But it wasn't stolen or lost, instead it died a natural death. So presumably it would have died a natural death anyway, even if it stayed uh, in the house. So what do we do in such a case? Abaye, in the name of Rabah, says the Shomer is liable because he was negligent. He should not have allowed it to go out, and therefore, once he's negligent, he's liable. Rabah, however, says also in the name of Rabah, is Machloket about the ba- Abaye and Rabah, both students of Rabah, so Machloket about what Rabah said. Rabah says, Patur, and we'll explain why. Abaye Mishmed Rabah Mar Chayav. Says, first of all, he is liable, and any judge that doesn't follow this is not a valid judge. In other words, not just my opinion, you have to follow this. And I say this ruling not only according to the opinion that says, in general, in other cases, that if someone is negligent at the beginning, and even though in the end it happened to be an accident, in other words, like someone is um, is bound to be late to a meeting. In the end, uh, the meeting was canceled anyway. But still, can you uh, dock his pay for being late, right? So according to one opinion, yes. Even though you were ne- because you were negligent at the beginning, even though in the end you couldn't have gotten there anyway, still you're going to be liable. Even according to the one opinion says, in general, that although that if you were negligent, but in the end, you couldn't have gotten there anyway. In other words, you left late, but in the end, the uh, all the trains stopped, and there's no way you could have gotten there anyway. And so therefore, patur. But here would still would nevertheless say in this case chayav. Why? Because we can presume, or we can even if it's doubtful, but we can uh, suggest that perhaps the bad air near the marsh is what get, is what killed the animal, and maybe it wouldn't have died if it was home a natural death, and it's only. But that he was negligent and it went out there. So this is not really a total case of sofa be honest, um, because it really um, could have died because of the negligence of letting it go there in the first place. So that's why Abaye says the shomer is liable. Rava mishmed Rava Amar Patur Kol Dayana Dela Dain Ki Hai Dina Lav Dayana Hu Lami Baya Leman Damar Tchila Tov Shav Sofa Be Onis Patur De Patur Ela Fil Leman Damar Chayav. Hacha patur. My tama damrina malacha mavet. Mali hacha u mali hatam. Ravan Nimer Baba says patur. And any judge who doesn't follow this is not a valid judge, right? This is an absolute ruling. And not only according to the opinion who in general says 
that if someone starts out doing something out of negligence, even though in the end he was beyond his control, um, he is patur. In other words, because in the end it was beyond his control, is patur, even though he was negligent at the beginning. So certainly he would be patur. But even according to the opinion that says that someone who started out who started out negligent, but in the end couldn't have helped it anyway, and because it was beyond the circumstances, but he's chayav because he started off. Um, negligent and says Chayav, even that opinion that in general would say he's liable, here er, would agree that he's not liable. Why? Because we say the Malach Hamavit, this is the Gemara's way of saying a natural death, a natural death happens and it doesn't matter where the Malach Hamavit can be here, can be there, and the natural death that would have happened in the house would happen also at the marsh, and so therefore, even though the Shomer was negligent in allowing it to go to the marsh, since it wasn't stolen or lost at the marsh, at the marsh, but rather died a natural death, that would have happened anyway. Therefore, in this case, patur. Who in general says Chayav would agree that if the owner, the Shomer, was negligent, allowed it to go to the marsh, but uh, got it back home, and only then it died a natural death, he would agree, Patur. Because it got back home. And now there's no possibility that you could say, oh, it's because the air in the marsh is what killed it. It's back home and it died at home. So then there's no reason to have to make him liable. This is first case is like, you know, sometimes you leave the front door open all night. Okay, nothing happened. So now you lock it. Okay, once you realize and you locked it, Okay, you're uh, you're not liable if someone breaks in afterwards. Also, you're keeping your, you're watching something in that in the home as long as you uh, locked it afterwards, right? So you would not be liable because you forgot to lock it at night. And Rava agrees that if uh, if it was stolen from the uh from the marsh and then it died a natural death in the house of the thief that the shomet is liable why because eh, even if the malacha mavet had not come and not killed it and not it didn't it wouldn't it, even if it didn't die but where is it it's in the house of the thief in other words the thief stole it first and so from that point on, the Shomer is liable. You were negligent. You're allowed to go to the marsh where it could easily be stolen. And now it got stolen. So you're liable. Even though it died afterwards, yeah, but you were liable already because you allowed it to, allowed it to get stolen. Abaye asks Rava, according to your reasoning that if something dies a natural death, then we say, what's the difference where it was? Even if it's in the marsh and it dies a natural death, the Shomer is not liable because it would have also died in the home of the Shomer a natural death. Well, if you hold of that reasoning, then why didn't you apply it to the question that was asked of Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Ameh? When we saw above that Rabbi Abba asked Rabbi Ameh um, about a, a similar case, and Rabbi Ameh answered that, oh, we're talking about a case where the original owner gave permission to the Socher to give it to the Sho'el. That's why the, the Socher is not liable. Um, uh, because he gave him permission. So why do you have to give that exceptional, that, oh, that must be a case? Why is the Shomer liable? Even this was according to a question on the Biochanan. Biochanan says, I don't want my, the Biochanan says that the original owner can say, I gave this to you to deposit, to watch, and I didn't want it to be given into the hands of someone else. And so we asked, since, he, since the original owner can say that, why can't the original owner collect the payment from the Sho'el, um, uh, since uh, the Socher gave it to the Sho'el without permission. And so we had to answer, oh, he got permission. But we could have a better answer, a simpler answer, um, and just say that it died a natural death, and therefore, what's the difference where it died a natural death? It would have died a natural death anyway. And that's why the Shomer, the Socher, can tell the original owner, listen, it died a natural death. So what's the difference? You're upset that I, get, I gave it to that guy? 
but and if I had it, if I had it, also would have died a natural death. So what's the difference, right? And that's similar to this case here, where by negligence it went to the marsh, but it died a natural death. But you still say, what's the difference where it is? That's Abaye's challenge to Rava. And Rava responds to Abaye, according to you, that you explained Rabbi Yochanan's reasoning that the owner can say, I didn't want my deposit to be in someone else's hand. Yeah, according to your reasoning, we learn here that um, uh, this is only Abaye's reasoning. It wasn't Rabbi Yochanan's original reasoning. Abaye, Rabbi Yochanan just said, Shomer, Shemasad Shomer, Chayav. Abaye is the one that explained that it's because the original owner can, said, can say, I trusted you, I didn't trust that person. And if, if, if that's the reasoning of Rabbi Yochanan, then you're right. That would have been an easier answer. This would have been an easier answer that you could say, well, what's the difference if it's uh, if it's in my hands or someone else's hands? You're saying uh, you didn't want it to be in someone else's hands, but it would have died a natural death no matter what. So that would be a sufficient answer. But I never agreed, Rava says, to you, to your opinion. Remember, Rava, when he decided the halacha, said, ex- explained to Biochanan uh, as follows, that the original owner says, I believe you, the first Shomer, uh, when you make a vow, because I know you and I'll believe your vow. But the other guy that you gave it to, I don't believe his vow. So in that case, there's no question, there's no uh, room to ask the question at all, because it's not about what would have happened. It's about belief of the vow, right? And um, yeah, maybe it would it would have died in the other place also. Uh, uh, very possible. And if in fact it died of a natural cause. Fine, the original owner says, fine, patur. But I don't believe the vow of that other guy that it um, that died of a natural cause in his hands. I don't know if that's true. I only believe you. And therefore, if you say it died of a natural cause in your hands, I believe you. If he makes a vow that it's a died of a natural cause in his hands, I don't believe him. And that's why um, uh, the socher has to pay, um, according to Rabbi Yochanan. Mativ Rami Bar Chama He'elaha l'rashe sukin v'nafla en ze ones v'chayav. Ha meta kedarka hare ze ones u patur v'amai le'male avila dahar ketala iname u'psena dehar ketala. Rami Bar Chama now challenges the opinion of Abaye, Abaye who says chayav, in the in the previous cases from a Mishnah that comes later on in 93b. If uh, someone brings an animal, he's watching someone's animal, and he brings it up to the top of a cliff, and then the animal falls. We don't call that ones, an accident. What, do you, what are you doing? Why are you bring the animal up to the top of the cliff? And therefore, that Shomed is liable. So we can infer from this that if it died a natural death up on top of the cliff, then that would be considered beyond his control, right? A natural death, and he would not be liable. But why? Why don't you say, Abaye, like you do in the case of a marsh, that even if it dies a natural death in the marsh, we say, maybe it's the air in the marsh that killed him. Um, so here also, we could say, maybe it's the air up on the mountain that killed it, or the exhaustion of climbing the mountain that killed it. So um, why, why should it be patur? This should be analogous to the case of the Shomed, who's negligent and allows to go to the marsh and dies of natural death, that Abbas Abiyas had Chayav, here also should be Chayav. And the answer is Hachamais Kinan Sheela Limit Ay Shamen Vitob. It could be that the the Shomer um, brought it up to the high mountain where there was nice, uh, a bountiful, high quality pasture. And so he did a good job, this Shomer shepherd, by bringing it there. It's not an act of neg- negligence. Um, and so um, if he brought it up there and died a natural death, he's patur. If it if it fell off the mountain, he is liable, however. So why? If he, if he fell off the mountain, so he should also not be liable because he brought it up to the mountain, but that was normal. Normal. Because she should have grabbed it and, and, and stopped it from, from falling. And he didn't run after it and grab it to stop it from falling. So there he could have done something about it. If it dies a natural death, what could he do? Um, but if it falls off the mountain, he should have been more careful. 
uh, if you're going to say that the shepherd should prevent it from falling, then how about the resha of that Mishnah that says, Alta, this is if the animal went up on its own, the, the sefa is he'ela, he brought it up. If the animal went up on its own and fell, we do call that onus. Why do you call that onus? Why don't you say that the shepherd should have held on to it and made sure it didn't fall off? You're right, it, be, it must be a case where he tried to stop it, but went up anyway. He tried to stop it, but he wasn't able to, and it went uh, and it fell down. Um, so he tried his best to stop it, and that's why that's a case of honest. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.